So welcome to our girl relationships on this channel. We talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My wife and I have been married for a little over two years. My wife is the only child. So she's very close with her parents. Her mother also thinks that she's in our marriage because she comes to the house whenever she wants. She thinks she has a significant say in what goes on in our family. It's very annoying. And my wife can't see what I say. I hope it doesn't cause bigger issues in our relationship. I only signed up to marry my wife, not her mother. Her dad is decent and understands boundaries. You would think that he would be the issue because she's a big daddy's girl, but that's not the case. I'm sick of it and won't know how much longer I can keep up with it before I explode. My wife knows exactly how I feel about this, but she takes it very lightly and doesn't see any big deal in it. There was even a time that I thought we were alone in the house and I wasn't appropriately dressed, and when I got to the living room, I was shocked to see my mother-in-law. It's almost as if I can't breathe when we first got married. I thought it was some form of separation anxiety. My wife and her mom were very close to each other and now she was getting married. I tolerated it for the first year until I realized that it would become an issue if I didn't do something about it. I even confirmed with some of my married friends who've been married longer than me to find out if my mother-in-law's behavior was normal. When they told me that she was a problem, I decided to speak to my wife about it. But the outcome was not favorable. My wife recently traveled, but before she did, her mom had mentioned that she wanted to have a party at our house when she traveled. That was an obvious no for me, but my wife agreed. She didn't even check with me to see if I was okay with it. I had forgotten about it until two days ago. My wife called me to give the spare key to her mom for the party. She and her friends were going to come in today since everyone wanted to be crazy. Then I could be crazier. I made everywhere noticeably untidy and made sure it was awful. I didn't take out the trash from days before or do the dishes didn't clean to prepare for the coming either. Since my mother-in-law believed it was her house, she could as well clean it if she wanted a party. I felt it was very disrespectful because she has a big house where she and my father-in-law live alone, but she didn't have it there, and wanted to inconvenience me. I left the key somewhere on the porch so she could pick it up when they came and had their party. I wasn't going to come back home that night, so I packed my things to stay at my sister's house that evening. My wife called me so many times, I can't remember how many I didn't answer any of her calls. She usually prefers to call, because she's usually swamped, so she would call to get the conversation over and done. I always teased her about it, because I don't know a young person that doesn't like the text anyways. She texted me about how inconsiderate I was for not cleaning the house, when I knew we were going to have guests. She also said she knew I did it on purpose, despite her and her mom. She said she wondered if I truly loved her, and if I could stand her mom, that one cut me deep. She also said many more personal things that I'd rather keep to myself, A-I-T-A. I spoke to my wife the next day, and it was another round of insults and things that I hope she didn't mean. She said that my jealousy had destroyed my relationship with my mother-in-law. She said I always had her to myself, but was always unhappy. Whenever my mother-in-law was around, the whole phone call was about how unhappy she was with me, and that I better fix the mess. I caused my mother-in-law also called me, and basically did the same thing, only that she was meaner. She spoke about how she never really liked me and told her daughter not to marry me, but she didn't listen. She said, I had shown her that I couldn't maintain a home, and she didn't know what my wife was still doing being married to me. I thought it was a perfect time to give her a piece of my mind. I wouldn't let her insult me and get away with it. I told her everything I thought about her, even things I knew I shouldn't say. I didn't like her at all. I only respected her because she was my wife's mum. I wasn't surprised that she tried to persuade my wife not to marry me. I wondered if that was why she was always around and behaved like a parasite, just to strain the relationship between my wife and I. She has succeeded now because I'm not sure where we stand. After everything my wife said to me, when my wife returned from her trip, it was the same thing she and her mom had ganged up against me. I indeed, if she knew who she was married to, even my mother-in-law's friends thought that they had a say in the situation and thought that they could give me advice and tell me how disappointed they were in me. They said I acted like a child and not a man who was married. I told all of them off, and at this time I was getting furious, to the point that I started to think of getting divorced. Our home never remained the same. 
I don't believe I did anything wrong after all. It's my house, and my wife wouldn't apologize or take back all she said. There is a lot of tension in the air, and so many things left unsaid. We stopped speaking to each other and acted like the, the other person wasn't there. I think my wife is waiting for me to apologize, but I won't do that if she can't see that her mother is causing a strain in our marriage. Then there's no use trying to patch things up. My sister told my mom what happened, and she called and gave me some good scolding. She told me that she understood my point of view, but that didn't mean that I should have taken Mathers into my own hands. She said I should have found other mature ways to handle the situation. There was no other mature way to handle the situation. As far as I was concerned, my mother-in-law just wanted to cause trouble, and I was ready to give it to her when they came to the house and saw that it was dirty. I learned that they went to one of their houses. If that option was open, why did they choose to inconvenience me? The divorce is now looking like a viable option for me, and I'm really thinking that I would go with it. Marriage can only work with adequate communication whenever there is a conflict. The only way I see things now, my wife has let her mother poison her thoughts about me, and I don't think there's much I can do about it. I love my wife so much, but unfortunately, I think that things would only get worse. She's become very irritable towards me, and hardly ever smiles, no matter how much I try. I'm going to give it time to see how things work out. I guess. My wife realized I wouldn't let what happened slide. Like I always did. I tried to make peace with her for two weeks after our fight. But she acted immaturely, I decided to let her be. Which I've never done before. I've too complained the game. I stopped trying to make peace and ignored her, didn't make any jokes or compliment her since she didn't reply. Anyway, we started getting further apart. This did something to me, and how I saw her. She was slowly becoming like any regular person I'll meet on my way to work. Things that she would do, that I thought were cute, became annoying to me. I could tell that I was falling out of love with her, which scared me one evening. She came home and asked to speak to me. She actually apologized. I had wanted her to say something for a while, but she didn't. Honestly, her apology didn't do it for me. It didn't mean that much to me. I accepted the apology, but I knew that something had changed, and we had to fix it or our marriage was gone for good. We became more formal with each other. Both of us were walking on eggshells. It didn't feel right anymore, and I even stopped looking forward to going home. I hope that we can go through this. That's the thing about letting others influence your marriage. It gets messy. I haven't spoken to anyone about how I feel or about anything, but I think I should get some help. Maybe I would. So I know that I tried to salvage my marriage after about two months. I opened up to my mom about what was going on in my marriage. My wife and I were no longer happy. We had said too many hurtful things to each other. Out of anger, it was very awkward, even after she apologized. I would say that we just went through the motions and tried to be decent to each other, telling my mom was the best thing I told her, that I was considering divorce. I explained everything that had happened since our fight, which she knew about and my mom was furious with my mother-in-law. I told her not to do anything crazy, but I knew that she wouldn't listen, knowing her. My mom lived four hours away, but she drove to speak to my father-in-law and told him to put his wife straight, and if he didn't, she would... She told him about all that had been going on and how my mother-in-law treated me and constantly intruded. My father-in-law called my wife and me and asked to meet us as soon as possible. I didn't know my mom had spoken to him at that time. He gave us a mini-couples therapy session. He also recommended a professional for us to see. He told us that our marriage was worth saving and that we should give it our all that resonated with me a lot, and I thought it was the least I could do. Also, my father-in-law put his wife straight. They actually had a big fight about it. I found out that he had been telling her that she was too involved in our marriage, but she didn't listen. We started the therapy, and it's been going well. My wife and I learned to set boundaries and understand each other more. The therapy was needed because we tackled other issues as well. Now it's safe to say that I'm the happiest man alive. I finally have my wife all to myself without my mother-in-law's influence. Thank God I opened up about the whole situation. If I hadn't, we could have been divorced by now, NTA. Your wife was blinded by her mother, just like my husband is with his mom. The fact that you guys were able to deal with it in the end gives me hope, because I'm at my wit's end here.
next story. So I'll try to make this short. Last year I, a 25-year-old woman, lost a baby at three months pregnant and was devastated. So I cut myself off from everyone but my husband because it was too hard to talk, and my husband did the same. Mother-in-law and sister-in-law did not like being unanswered when they would call and text. And when my sister-in-law found my TikTok, they had been inactive for a few months, except for posting that I was pregnant and would be inactive for a while on my TikTok. I had old videos that were from before I was pregnant drinking a glass of wine. So sister-in-law and mother-in-law took that and spun it. That I drank to purposely miscarry. Since then, I've given in to putting up with mother-in-law to not make things harder for my husband. But while talking about Easter plans... I was telling my husband that if sister-in-law was going to dinner, I would drop him off and go to make my own dinner at home and pick him up later. He did not like this idea and told me I should just forgive sister-in-law, like I did my mother-in-law for what was said since it would make family gathering awkward for him if I just didn't show up and would give sister-in-law more to say about me. But I refused saying that I don't want to be around someone that would say those things about such a horrible loss And I don't have to forgive her, I've been thinking about this a lot. And just want to ask AIT. Uh, Also important to note that I have two underlying medical conditions that make hearing a term almost impossible and was found by my gynecologist to be the reason for my miscarriage. Both mother-in-law and sister-in-law are well aware of these conditions and were aware before they found out about my pregnancy. So I want to thank everyone for their kind words and support on this. It means a lot to me. I want to give a small update on the post since last night, and today some things have happened and some improvements have been made to the situation. First of all, my husband and I had a long talk last night after I got home from work. I work nights at a hospital. So I was at work when I posted this, due to him noticing that I had puffy and bloodshot eyes coming home, and insisted that we talk about what went wrong. He thought it had to do with someone at my work, I explained the best I could to him about how this situation hurt me, and still doesn't, and how I've been pushing everything aside for him, and he was honestly shocked and heartbroken that I hadn't been more vocal about how bad it was. In my mind, I agreed to cut full contact with sister-in-law and never push us to go to a family event that she will attend, or may attend, to keep me out of that situation. He also called mother-in-law on his break at work, and had a long talk with her about setting boundaries between her and I. She claimed to have never heard a thing about what sister-in-law said, but I don't really believe that he made sure that she knows that I want no contact with her, and that she is not to come to our house, and I would no longer be attending any family event stating that, even if she says she didn't know about this incident, I am still not comfortable around her due to the past things that she said about me, and how she blamed that on being drunk. But my husband made it clear that no matter why things were said, they were not okay and it's my choice to be apart from his family. And even if it hurts her feelings, he will not make me be a part of it. Husband also has a better idea on how deep my feelings are still on my loss. He has read the Reddit post, but I was having a hard time explaining while crying. It also made him look closer at his actions and apologize to me for getting me through this, after reading comments and seeing things from another point of view other than just his family, and this is pushing me more that I need to get therapy as soon as I get insurance and will help me navigate on how to get one husband will still be in contact with mother-in-law. But limited contact NTA and your SO don't get to tell you who to forgive for anything, no matter the reason, be it blood or friends. ETA, my condolences for your loss next story. I, 32-year-old male. I'm child-free, I occasionally don't mind babysitting for my sister and her husband who have three kids, a 12-year-old girl, 10-year-old girl, and an 8-year-old boy. But I've never wanted kids of my own. I know it sounds harsh, but I literally just don't like them. I'll hang out with my nieces and nephews for a few hours every so often. But I really have never been interested in spending more time than I have to with them. This is all just for context. My sister and her husband put together an Easter egg hunt for their kids this weekend, plus a friend. Each of them could pick out, but they didn't tell me that I'd be supervising until the last minute. Apparently they had scheduled an Easter lunch date, but thought that I would reject babysitting the kids if they told me ahead of time which I would have. 
So they just didn't tell me until the last minute they said that they had already hidden all the eggs, and all I needed to do is keep an eye on the kids while they went egg hunting, and my sister was pretty much pleading with me, so I gave in and said I'd watch them while they egg hunted. I figured that the kids probably knew what they were supposed to be doing, since they had been looking forward to the hunt for a few days. So I counted them off, and just let them start hunting for further context. My sister and her husband live sort of in the middle of nowhere, and their backyard is pretty huge. There's also a stream running through just outside the boundaries of their yard. But I figured my sister had told the kids not to mess around near it, so I didn't remind them. She didn't give me any instructions on where the eggs were hidden, versus where they weren't. I had things to catch up on. So I sat down on the deck on my phone. Things were all good for about ten minutes, until my oldest niece came up to me with my nephew, who was crying and soaked and bleeding from scraping his knee. She said that he tripped on one of the stones near the stream and fell in, and she had to grab him and haul him out. I tried to get him cleaned up before my sister got home, but my older niece tattled, and my sister and extended family were furious. Apparently it was my job to actually watch them and that I was lucky my nephew hadn't fallen in and drowned, or she'd be suing me for neglecting her kids. But I don't think that's fair, after all. They're not my kids. I didn't want to babysit, and it's not like anything seriously actually happened. Nobody drowned. The worst thing that happened was a skinned knee, and all ten-year-olds skin their knees. At some point, my sister told my extended family, and now they won't stop texting me about how awful I am for letting this happen. I don't think I should have to apologize, but my family probably isn't going to stop harassing me until I do a ITA. She shouldn't have baited you into babysitting, but you should have walked out instead of agreeing. If you agree to watch the children, you should be watching them and not letting them drown while you scroll. I'm sure this will get you out of future babysitting, though.